MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Advanced Sports Labs. Expedite your blood work today at advancedsportslabs.com. Welcome to MMA Inside the Cage, bringing the world of mixed martial arts straight to you. I'm your host, Cyrus Fees. He's Casey Oxenine. And as we're known on the internet now, we are the suit and the beard. You cool with that, partner? Well, I don't know, man. You know, because uh, I've worked really, really hard in this sport Mm -hmm. and on this show to create a real non-conformist way uh, of approaching this. And we call it a suit after everything that I've been through and everything I've done sort of Uh confuses me and uh, and insults me somewhat. Yeah, so you don't think I would be the suit and you would be the beard maybe <laughs> well that certainly yeah. does make a lot more sense <laughs> it sure does tonight we're going to give you another hometown throwdown this time coming out of connecticut with reality fighting we're also going to check out some hometown cooking from the 3fc and iris garcia has ufc veteran mike the joker gaimon as well as wec vet chad george a guy that is still on the rise a little bit later now let's go to the newswire and break down a little mma news flurry last week we featured darren our main event of the week and it looks like now that event in thailand may be the last one in the country for a while news has come down that the country is banning mixed martial arts immediately citing that it's too brutal now we've been in contact with jesse celeranta the owner of dare and this is the company statement you can see it here on the screen now casey this seems to be a little fishy, you know. It's kind of like how boxing promoters kind of put pressure on MMA in recent years. What's your take on it? Well, that you know can definitely be part of it. Thailand is is a huge amount of revenue for a lot of people there mm-hmm. uh, in Thailand. You know, it's the national sport. Um, but you, you've got to look at the flip side too. You know, uh, the way uh, MMA is is brought in and the way Muay Thai is presented. You know, Muay Thai is every bit as brutal and, and violent as mixed martial arts, but they are very ceremonial, much like uh, sumo wrestling in Japan. Mm-hmm. You know, they they have a ceremony. They uh, it's very respectful. Sure. Uh, you know, they play music during the uh, during the fight. It's, it's, it's just a whole different kind of approach, and I think it's going to take some time now for uh, for, the, for that country and, and the commissions and everything uh, to accept mixed martial arts. Well, I think, you know, DARE is far from over. You know, if worse comes to worse, the company has assured me that they have options outside of Thailand, so DARE's not going anywhere. That million-dollar purse is not going anywhere. DareFightSports.com. Go check it out for any upcoming updates. Now, it was quite the week for King Mo, Mohamed Lawal, as he was fined $30,000. He was suspended for nine months, criticized. You know, he criticized the Nevada State Athletic Commission, and then he was fired from Zufa. A lot of stuff going on here. Now he says he's looking into professional wrestling. Yeah. What do you make of this whole situation with King Mo Casey? Well, call the commission racist is what he did. Yeah, All right, yeah. straight yeah, up. Rough. And uh, but you've got to look at it. Uh, you know, King Mo has had a rough few months. You know, last few months. Of course, he had the knee surgery. Uh, had that horrible staph infection, possibly the worst staph infection any Scary fighter's ever stuff. had. They, yeah. You know, he had a heart stent. Uh, they didn't know if he was going to make it at all. You know, and uh, that's a lot of pressure. You know, and when you think that there's a possibility, you're just not going to make it at all. Um, you know, there's a lot of stress involved. Then he goes to the to the, the hearing with the, the commission. And, uh, you know, uh, he feels like they, they, they wouldn't listen to him. You know, he, he felt like he brought a, a strong argument and they, uh, they put him on the chopping block. So uh, I can understand his frustration. Unfortunately, when you make those kind of comments to a commission like that, you, you could be in trouble. Professional wrestling, I, I don't I know, man. I can see it. I can see King it. Mo, it, it. You know, just like Rampage, and you know what? Rampage might show up down there, and they may, you know, have that feud that they were talking about in the beginning. King Mo and uh, this is true. I, I can see. I don't see him going straight to the WWE, but I can see TNA for sure. It'd be mm-hmm. a good option for him to get started. At. We'll see what happens. Our breaking story of the week. Well, that comes from Kearney, Nebraska. You know, when news came down that former UFC great Maurice Smith was getting back into the cage, I think quite a few people, including myself, were a little leery of a 50-year-old fighting once again. Well, last weekend at Resurrection Fighting Alliance's second card, Smith took on a man 22. Two years younger than him, 1-0 fighter Jorge Cordoba. Now, this fight went into the third round, Casey. Very competitive, but sure enough, Maurice Smith gets the nasty highlight reel head kick victory. Talk about this comeback story, Casey, because it's a big one. It's one for the ages. It's yeah, well, you know, Maurice Smith is a legend in the sport. You know, he was single-handedly responsible for bringing striking back into relevance in the UFC. Mm. You know, I mean, uh, this is a guy who, um, you know, even at 50 years old, uh, is, has retained his power, uh, sure. which, you know, the power is the last thing to leave you. Uh, he comes back and he, he gets a big win, which is, is awesome. I'm glad to see. I am concerned, you know, that if any time a 50-year-old fighter uh, tries to make that step back in you know um, the guy is only one and oh that that he faced Uh, if he were to try to make another step and and continue this career it could be you know bad news for for Murray Smith you know Uh, but for for what he did and uh, and this pushback you know I give huge congrats to Murray Smith and and I'm always happy to see the big legends uh, go 
down and, and do big things. It was impressive, you know. We'll see what's next for Mo. Uh, make sure you go to the RFAfighting.com. That's the official website for Resurrection Fighting Alliance. UFC veteran Mike the Joker Gaimon, as well as WEC vet Chad George, a guy that is still on the rise. Coming up after the break and reality fighting a little bit later. But here it is. It's your MMA Inside the Cage. Punch of the week. As a professional fighter, there's a lot of things that I need to be concerned about. I need to be concerned about my opponent. I need to worry about my fans. I don't want to have to be concerned about my blood work. That's why I go to Advanced Sports Labs and I get my blood work done in an affordable manner. They get it done fast. They send it to the commission, they send it to the promoter, and they send it to me so I have peace of mind knowing that everything's done properly. I mean, why wouldn't you use Advanced Sports Labs? They get things done faster than the competition and their standard rates are lower than everyone else's sale rates. It's a no-brainer. Expedite your blood work today at AdvancedSportsLabs.com. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Advanced Sports Labs. Welcome back, round two of MMA Inside the Cage. You know, we travel the country for our hometown throwdown each week, and sometimes we even go worldwide for our footage. But this time, we're staying right here in the Deep South. 3FC9 was last weekend, and it provided a bunch of exciting fights, including your punch of the week, which you just saw. Now, not only did you get fights for some guys that are going pro, guys like Craig Johnson, Eric Robeson, and then, of course, your main event winner, primetime Adam Townsend, but the undercard brought some fireworks as well, Casey. It was just all around a great card. It sure was, man. I was really excited. Of course, uh, the knockout of the night, Jared Philbeck, one of my guys, uh, he brought it home. Uh, and then... Uh, Big Donnie Lester. Big Donnie Dude, Lester, man, brutal. bringing home the heavyweight strap with a knockout and, and then of course Michael Tyson bring home the women's bantamweight belt which was huge. A lot, it's a lot of good stuff there and that was actually the first MMA show that's ever been in Gatlinburg which they consider what like the Vegas Strip of the Smoky Mountains. I was a right? little concerned about the Vegas Strip of the Smoky Mountains when I first got there you know <laughs> because I was walking there and I was seeing all these families and, and I didn't know how they were going to accept it but man by fight night I looked out there and I saw Bad Street USA when I oh, looked at yeah, man, There was a lot of people out there you know this is an amateur organization primarily Casey but I'll tell you what man anyone that thinks that amateur MMA can't be done right mm -hmm. that you know that it's backwards it can't be done right 3FC is one of those promotions that will change your mind because it's done well and it's done good. Tim and Gene both put on an excellent show. They do their part. Uh, of course, Tim Loy is the matchmaker, and he puts together excellent, excellent fights all the way around. You know, he, he matches for a lot of places, but 3FC is his like main home base. Mm -hmm. and, and when he does it, uh, you know, he, he takes it very, very seriously, and uh, you know that that's his bragging right. That show is is it. That's true. Gene clicks great, and then of course they have a fantastic ring announcer. This guy right here, Cyrus Fees, that's right. Hire me. I'm the one you need. 3FC, they're taking the next show down to Chattanooga on May 11th. And for more info on that card, go check out 3FCMMA.com. You know, we have Reality Fighting's hometown throwdown after the break. But as always, Iris Garcia is out in Cali hunting down some great interviews. This time, she has UFC veteran Mike the Joker Gaimon, as well as WEC vet Chad George, a guy that is still on the rise. Let's go to that interview right now, and we'll see you on the other side. I'm here with Chad George. Congratulations on your victory today. Tell us your game plan coming in. I noticed you started off a little slow, like you're filling out. Then you got really aggressive. How was it? Was that part of your game plan, or you just adapted? You know, I, I kind of was just going with the mom momentum of the fight. We knew he was an aggressive fighter. He, um, <clears throat> we actually thought he was going to come straight at me, so I was waiting for that. So when we realized he wasn't doing exactly what we thought. That was my opportunity to pick up the pace and uh, do what I do best, finish fights. <laughs> yeah, we did notice that. And also, it's obvious you're a fan favorite. Does that motivate you more when you're in the fight, or are you just so concentrated you don't even hear them cheering for you? Uh, absolutely. I, I love the fans. You know, I, I've been fighting out of L.A. since I started, and even though I'm from Sacramento originally, my fan base has been growing here in L.A. for so long, and um, I truly fight for them, and I, and, I, and I feel their energy when I'm in there. So what's next for you? What should we expect? Um, you know, I'm, I'm doing whatever my management tells me to do, but we're really hoping that um, there's a UFC here in August. You know, I've got three wins in a row. Uh, I don't think there's a better fit for somebody to represent L.A. than me when it comes here. 
There you go. So ideally, if you could choose, who would you want to fight next? I don't. I don't care. The bantamweight division is so stacked. Um, anyone that they give me is going to be one hell of a fight. So uh, this was one fight that I did at 145. My next fight and everything after will be at back down at 135. So. All right. Well, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm here with Mike Joker Guyman. Congratulations on your victory today. Thank you very much. Was that the game plan coming in? I noticed in the first round you looked a little bit frustrated with the leg kicks, but then coming in the second round you just took them down to the ground. Uh, it's just uh, my cornerman, they said, look, you know, don't play on the feet there. We could take them down in the clinch and we could break them there. And he goes, you're going to go out there, you're going to put them in that clinch, you're going to break them down, and you're going to win this thing. And I said, all right, cool. Got up. Went out there and just listened to what he said, and we know each other very well, and he knew I would get him in the clinch to break him down and get that vi victory, and that's, there we go. Just listen to your cornerman. Uh, if you have a very good group at camp and you know each other, it's just simple little wording, and uh, just listen, and you'll get your job done. So. You know, I noticed like um, there was a time when I thought that the referee was going to stop the fight and it continued going. Were you a little frustrated at that time or you didn't even notice? Uh, I knew. I was like, all right, come on. Damn it. Let's, let's, let's put a capper on this. Let's end this thing. <laughs> I got to make it a little bit more convincing and finally it happened and got the victory. So very happy. All right. So what do we expect next from you? Another fight and another victory. Okay. Yeah, very simple. Uh, <laughs> the old me's back, that stubborn mule, you know, and that's, mm -hmm. that's the most dangerous fighter is that fighter that uh, he's, there's nothing that's going to do to stop him. And that's me. Like, when I'm, when I'm straight, you're not going to stop me. <laughs> so, sorry, guys. If I fight you, you can do whatever you want. There's nothing. There's nothing you can do to break me. It's just me. So... <laughs> Yeah. You know, I noticed that you actually have also like a really strong following. Yeah. They're selling your t-shirts, people are yeah. buying them, they're wearing yeah. them. Talk to us about that. Like, it's just, I think everybody knows what you see is what you get with me. Mm -hmm. I'm about as genuine as you get. Uh, I wear my heart on my sleeve. <clears throat> I'm a good guy. I just want to see everybody do well. And uh, fortunately, I have the best people around me. So. It's cool. It really helps. It makes this this weight cut, you know, going from such a high weight to a low weight, it makes it all worth it. You know, these guys make it happen. My wife makes it happen. My following, uh, the shirt me and Tricosta did together. It's just, it's awesome the support. Thank so you guys. You're talking about that like weight cut. Like, how long did you have to <laughs> lose the weight, and how much weight did you lose? Um, I probably lost like 35 pounds. <laughs> um, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. You got to sacrifice if you're gonna if you're gonna fight that weight make the sacrifices to do your job. That's part of your job. I take it very seriously. And I made my weight for the fight. There was like, if anybody's gonna come up short on the weight, it was me. No, my opponent <laughs> was overweight. I'm the one underweight. And it's like, it's just, it's funny. So, so you really did reach your goal. <laughs> oh yeah, I was underweight, you know? I weighed in under my weight and my opponent was freaking two and a half over. Yeah. And I was like, I was laughing, I was mad. I was like, <laughs> I show him the respect that I'm gonna freaking yeah. come in here and do my job and he doesn't do it, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. We appreciate it. And nice nails. I noticed them actually. <laughs> Who did them for you? Um, I did. Okay. No, I'm joking. No, there's a there's a nail shop. My wife got me into these manicure pedicures. I think she doesn't <laughs> like me doing them anymore. I love <laughs> them. <laughs> <laughs> Bamination, baby. <laughs>
Advanced Sports Lab is always a great experience. You go in, you get your blood drawn, they take care of all the paperwork for you, they send your results to the commission and to the promoter so I can just focus on being a professional fighter and getting on the fight. Advanced Sports Labs. Expedite your blood work today at advancedsportslabs.com. Impact Custom Mouth Guards, high quality customized mouth guards that won't break your bank. Find us on Facebook today or email us at frank at impactmouthguards.com. Impact Custom Mouth Guards, we protect your smile and your brain. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Advanced Sports Lab. And we're back, third and final round, time to impress the judges, and once again, it's time to head across the country for the hometown throwdown. This time we go to New England, Connecticut, New Jersey, where reality fighting has been putting on big time cards since 2002. Joe Cuff, Kip Culler, the same guys behind the North American Grappling Association, or NAGA, are still going strong with reality fighting. Casey, they put together a nice product, you know these guys real well. I do, I've known jo uh, Joe and Kip for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. um, something they've got going on uh, that makes reality fighting so special is that, of course, like you mentioned, Naga uh, is, is probably the biggest grappling company in, in the United States, yeah. definitely. Uh, and, uh, and and what they do is they, they pop a lot of those guys into these MMA events. So you get guys that are very experienced. Uh, they're, they're good athletes. They're skilled. It's not just a, a lot of bums off the street. Mm -hmm. Well, just a few names that have come through their ranks. you got the Miller brothers, uh, Jim and Dan. you got Napau, Gabriel Gonzaga, Kurt Pellegrino, Christian Moorcraft. You know, this could go all day. Just talk about some of the camps that are Involved. Well, of course, you've got uh, Henzo Gracie mm -hmm. and in uh, the Matt Sarah camps. Uh, of course, those uh, those camps really started Naga. That's that's where it all began up there towards Connecticut. Uh, and uh, you know, Lloyd Irvin. Uh, uh, Lloyd Irvin has a strong, very strong presence there in the D.C. area up into New York as well. Okay. Well, you know, their last fight was another winner. And then June second, they're coming right back to Connecticut, Uncasville, Connecticut, for their next card. Check out RealityFighting.tv for all the details. And right now, let's go into their archives for our MMA inside the cage main event of the week. Nope, let's see who gets it done tonight. Mike Dexter and Parker Porter for the title. It's on now. Dexter looks really calm and relaxed. Parker keeping those hands high, got the reach over Dexter. Good inside kick. Nice wow, right great by right by Parker. Got Dexter looking for the shot right off the rip. Dexter's already in trouble, and he's actually grabbing the wrong leg. Parker Porter is going to go right to the back now. All right, Dexter's going to try. Dexter has nowhere to roll. He's got nowhere to roll. He did tuck tight on the arm, but he's got nowhere to roll here. What are you doing if you're Dexter here, John? Oh, uh, you've got to start to turn and try and play some guard. You've got to stop these punches. Parker seems to be the bigger fighter in this matchup, which I did not expect telling you the truth going into it. Without a doubt. Parker is pretty active moving around. Dexter, and Dexter's just got nothing for him right now. You know, this is surprising saying Parker's also fought at 205. Wow. I would not want to be in there with him at 205. No, this sir. is in danger of getting stopped if Dexter doesn't start to move. He's just holding on. I'll tell you what, Mike Dexter is intelligently defending at this point. Big Dan is a very good ref. He, he, does, he does know exactly what he's doing here. But you got a great point there, John. If Dexter doesn't start moving and try to get something going, he's at a chance of having a huge guy like Parker stop him. That's a tap! That is, that a, is a tap! Let's take a look at this. Big right hands coming down by Porter. He doesn't have a hook secured. Dexter not active from the bottom, not defending himself. I mean, there's nothing to do but stop it this. It looks like Dexter wanted out of there a lot quicker than that. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by TKO and new heavyweight champion, Parker Porter. Let's hear what Parker has to say. Send it inside the cage to Kip Kolar. Impact custom mouth guards, high quality customized mouth guards that won't break your bank. Find us on Facebook today or email us at frank at impactmouthguards.com. Impact custom mouth guards, we protect your smile and your brain. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Advanced Sports Labs. All right, we've been from Connecticut to Nebraska, right back down here to Tennessee. We've been everywhere, man. I feel like Johnny Cash out here today. Well, well, you know, this is actually blue, not black. But let's bring it all home, Casey. Let's get your curtain call and see what you have to say. All right, well, I was reading in the headlines that Rashad Evans was recently approached by a fan at an autograph signing uh, with a less than savory photo of him being knocked out by Leota Machida. Now, of course, he promptly wadded up the paper, threw it away, and sent the fan on his way. You know... When you think about it, 
um, Rashad Evans really handled this much more professionally than a lot of people would have. You know, uh, this fans, uh, they, they, they buy pay-per-views and they, they buy tickets and, and they put the, the sport on the map, but really it's the fighters that bring the action to you. They work hard, they train hard, and even when they lose, they put it all out there. So remember, when you're out there and you see these guys, show a little bit of respect because perhaps uh, these fighters, when you approach them in that manner, won't be quite quite as professional as Rashad Evans was on that day. Well, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at MMAITC, subscribe on YouTube for exclusive content, and check out our new home, MMAInsideTheCageTV.com. I'm Cyrus Fees. I'm Casey Oxendine. And we'll see you next week Inside the Cage.